Welcome to the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast. Real people doing real deals in real estate and no fake gurus allowed. We bring you the best and the most real real estate investors in the space. They'll be showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly of real estate investing. Like, share, subscribe, get notified. It's the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast. Welcome to the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today, we have a special edition on the wholesaling cartel. Let's go. We got our friend from Houston, Texas, Mr. Freedom Hawk, a.k.a. Blake. Blake, thank you so much, man, for coming in. Absolutely, man. Uh, So where does does the name Freedom Hawk come from? Man, I get this question a lot. Uh, Yeah. So my last name is Hawkins. Okay. So there's there's an easy connection with that. Right. And... um, in 2018, I was trying to come up with a company name, and I was. Jumping. That's a cool name, by the way. Like, yeah. I see it as a as a maybe if you had like a company where you did like skaters, uh, maybe for skating, BMX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of sure. that Absolutely. kind of I get that vibe. That vibe to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I'm all about freedom, right? You know what I mean. And uh, and I was just trying to come up with all these these names, and it just Freedom Hawk just kind of stuck. You know, so our, obviously our wholesaling company is Freedom Hawk Home Buyers. You know, so people know what the hell we do, right? But, uh, but yeah, it just kind of stuck, man. And now I've I've kind of ran with it ever since. That's pretty cool, man. And uh, so tell me about yourself, man. Uh, where do you come from? Are you from here, or are you from somewhere else? I was born in Galveston. Okay. You know, uh, it's 1984. You know, so uh, 36 years old. I I grew up in Alvin and Freeport. So right. half my life I grew up in Freeport. Half my life I grew up in Alvin. Okay. Um, humble beginnings, like all of us. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, dad's a blue collar worker, still is today. Hard ass worker. Learned all my work ethic from him. Refineries. Um, he worked on ships, so he. he oh. Right now, today, he works on uh, engines on the big ships that come into the port of Galveston. Oh wow, he's a yeah. diesel mechanic or great mechanic. Wow. Yeah, great mechanic, man. Hard ass work. Yeah, <laughs> but that's that's <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah. His hands are dirty all the time. All know? the time, man. All uh-huh. the time. But uh, some and then uh, grew up with my obviously uh, whole beginnings with my family. Um, and uh, just pretty typical, typical life, man. I, I grew up playing baseball, you know, just love sports, love the competition. Um, I was a late bloomer, so I was, uh, you know, I wasn't that good in high school, so I didn't really have a lot of opportunity after high school to play. Right. Um, really didn't know what the hell I was going to do. So I actually um, had a big fitness transformation after high school. I was overweight. Okay. And lost 60 pounds. Wow. You know, did that in like, a year time span. That's something I should do right now. <laughs> man, dude, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it, you got to put a lot of focus on it, man, you know, and, uh, yeah. dude, I was just like, you know, I was very, uh, passionate about that transformation. I, and, uh, so then I was like, well, what am I going to do? So I started working at the local YMCA and I uh, got my personal training license and became a personal trainer. Got it. So I did that for 10 years I, at a 24 hour fitness. I've worked at four different locations in Houston. That's good. Uh, so you were you um you f- you focus your f- the first part of your life in in fitness in, in, in fitness. In, like, was it strength training or or cardio training or weightlifting? Yeah, I mean, what? I was I was training just regular people, you know, and um, I think that's where that success mindset kind of was uh, developed. Developed because. Uh. I'm training attorneys, lawyers, doctors, nurses. You were networking with millionaires. All the time, dude. All the time. And I was just like, you, you get around these people and they're so positive, you know. And, and obviously they have some fitness struggles, but they're there to try to make it better. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, you know, I was oblivious. I mean, I was in my 20s, so I was, you know, I, I had a lot of growing up to do. Yeah. Um, and around 28, 29, I was like, I just started waking up to life, you know what I mean? And, and, um, I was like, I want more, I want more for myself. And I read think and grow rich in 2012, changed my life, wow. life, life changing stuff. Yeah. And then, um, I had, uh, I had a client, his name was Sal Cotri. He actually runs, um, he's a GM at Whitehall. What is it? Whitehall is a hotel in downtown. It's, a uh, I think it's Whitehall, but it, it's anyways, he real successful guy. And I was talking to him one day and, 
I was like, man, I'll say, I don't know if I can keep training, you know? And he was like, well, go, go create a business, you know, go, go into business for yourself. And, um, I didn't make the move. I kept training, you know, did that, uh, for shit, never four to five years, you know, but, um, and then I, I was just like, uh, I need to make a change, man. And I read rich dad, poor dad. And okay. Just, and then now you, you, you are like, okay. Real estate is where it's at. Yeah. Real estate is where it's at, but it was more of, more of the, the personal the thinking differently. Understanding where you were on the quadrant quadrant and then just the mindset. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it's actually, when I read that book, I was, I was pissed. Cause I was like, why didn't anybody teach me this? You know, mom, I was literally thinking backwards, you know? And, uh, so it was a very like enlightening moment for me. Very transformative. That's crazy. When you, when you come into a re realization like that, right? Dude, it was like, it was tell you, man, it was a massive, like I went through, like, I feel like I had a midlife crisis early. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Late 20 in your late twenties. No, seriously, man. Like it was, that's how I felt. <laughs> And, uh, I was like, dude, I got to change a shitload of things about my life. Yeah. You know, um, mindset relationships, my habits, who I'm hanging out, uh, what I want to be. I mean, it was just, it was just, uh, dude, across the spectrum, I had to change everything. And, um, so I read rich dad, poor dad. It was a very enlightening moment for me. And so I walked into uh, 24 hour fitness off of West timer and chimney rock. I was a, a fitness manager there. And, um, dude, I just fucking quit. You know, I just walked in. Uh, hey, I quit. I quit. Now, do you have a plan? No plan. <laughs> no plan. No fucking plan. It's like, I'm going to go from here. I'm going to just fucking quit. And I'm going to go build a dude, plan. Ricardo, I had no plan. Um, I remember that day I walked in, I quit. Um, I didn't have a lot of money. I was a personal trainer. Yeah. Um, at the time I was a manager, but I was making 40 grand a year. Right. Five grand a year. Right. So yeah. For you having a lot of money stashed away was Three grand. You had three oh, grand. Oh, dude, three grand. I was you, rich. you were rich. You're super, like super rich, yeah. man. And so um, I left that day. I quit because I knew I needed to make a move. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I drove across the corner on Chimney Rock, and there's a Papa John's pizza. And I literally just because it's like I, I need to work. I, I fucking deliver pizzas for six months. Wow, deliver pizzas so full you, time. So you went from being a personal trainer. You, I mean, you were burned out. From the personal burnt training, out. right? Burnt so, out. Burnt so you were out. burnt out, um, and then you're like, "I just want to do something different." I had to make a change. Yeah, and, and I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a do it and then figure it out later guy. Yeah, I'm the same way. You know what I mean? I'm the same. Like way. once I feel it, I can't. I can't. You know, some people are very methodical, and I try to be, but I'm just like, I just got to do it, and I'll fucking figure it out. Yeah, you'll figure it out along the way. I'll figure it out, dude. And uh, there was some other, there was some other things personally. Nick, Nick is like that too. Yeah, yeah, Nick yeah. is like oh, that yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why, I, like, I gravitate towards guys yeah. like that because it's, 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 we we understand each other because most people don't fucking understand me. I asked, I asked Nick, <laughs> and Nick the other day. I said, "Hey, Nick, uh, in Tulum, yeah, how do you do so? Whatever, I can, I can't even remember what it was all about." He's like, "Oh, you just, you just uh, do this, and then you'll figure out the rest." Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, like, I love yeah, it. These guys like me too. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm the same way, yeah. man. And um, so I just need to make a change. And I basically, for six months, it was sort of like a sabbatical for me. I didn't talk to nobody. All I did was go deliver my pizzas. I listened to fucking audiobooks all day. I was working 40, 50 hours at Papa John's and uh, making enough money. Cause I had a little bit of money saved up, so I had yeah. enough to pay my bills. Right. And, um, did that for six months, man. And then I was like, I'm done with this. What do I do now? So I went, there was a guy that I know, his name was Frank, and he was selling cars in Clear Lake Nissan. So I hit up Frank. I said, Frank, how much money are you making selling cars? Of course, you know how sales guys are. They like to show you, right? So so he sends me, yeah, yeah, he's that. <laughs> Send the screenshot. Yeah, screenshot, yeah, yeah. So, so Last he, month, yeah. I made 12550 yeah. bucks. <laughs> That's what he did. Bam. That's what he did. So he screenshot it. I think he was making like 10 grand a month, you know? And, dude, 10 grand a month for me, I was like. Uh, you're dude, rich. You're fucking rich, dude. I mean, and, and, and the truth is. When you make ten grand, that puts you at one twenty a year. Uh, I believe the number one percenters are above one fifty, so you're not far from not that far. from that one percenter, right? Absolutely. Um, when I was in the oil and gas business, I was bringing in like three hundred grand, and yeah. I was like in the point zero two percent. Good living, man. Oh, dude, I, I was yeah. Like, 
I wasn't gonna quit that job. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, like no, yeah. that was serious money it's for money. to be an employee. Um, and uh, I got I had the golden handcuffs. Literally, I hated it because I didn't like the. So uh, there were things I liked about my job, which number one, I had the, all the freedom in the world to come in and out of that building, right? Anytime I wanted. My boss was in the UK. Yeah, he wasn't even paying attention to what the hell I was doing. He was managing me based on numbers and tasks and things of that it's nature. KPIs. Right? KPIs. Yeah. That yeah. was that's how I was managed yeah. through KPIs, mm -hmm. and I was blowing my KPIs through the roof. So it wasn't hard for me to to be a top performer there, but. Man, I, I was doing real estate already. And I had like rentals and flips and and I was like, man, I know that if I work for myself, I can make a lot more money. Absolutely. I just don't know how because I've been doing this real estate on the side. That's not enough for me to sustain myself and, and survive with it, right? Right. And but yeah, I'm not a corporate hater. I tell people, like, hey man, you got a good job, milk it. I say the same thing, man. Because cuz cuz the thing is, is what I realize is to be an entrepreneur you're halfway fucking crazy. You're probably three quarters of the way. Three quarters. Yeah. I mean, 100%, dude. Because it's like, so what do human beings look for? Safety. Sta st safety, stability, because that's what we're trained for. Absolutely. Since we're kids. Yep. Don't touch the fire, you're yep. going to get burned, right? Yep. Don't do this, you're going to do that. And yep. so we're being wired for safety and stability. 100%. 100%. I, I, I actually sometimes question how my wife is still with me, like, Cause I made make her go through all kinds like Dude, a, a roller coaster. I know, man. I know. Well, I, I have a significant other now, and uh, I and, and I'm like, man, honestly, it, it, she's good for me. Cause I mean, it, it, she kind of grounds me a little bit. You right. know what I mean? But uh, I yeah, she she's like, I'm she's like, like, I don't know how you, how you do this shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it's it, it's not for everybody. But I tell people like, there's nothing wrong if you want to go work. Cause cause on this side of the street, like, dude, it's. It's a free for all. I mean, it's nothing's guaranteed. One thing I found out, Blake, is that, um, like, for instance, I was employed until 2015. That's when I got laid off, and by that time, I had already done a hundred properties, wow, rentals and flips. But I started in 2008, so it right. wasn't something that I did over one year. Exactly. It was like eight, eight, nine years, and it's still, the majority of those properties were in like the last three or four years. Is right. when the the bulk of it was right, um, but. Once I got laid off, I, I had to make a decision. Do I go get me another job, which I could have. I could have just picked up another job right away. I had an offer from somebody else. And I said, man, but that's the same thing. Like, in the day they decide that I'm no longer needed, that that's it. It's, wow. the, I'm out, right? Or do I take, I was your age, I was 36. Do I take the risk right now and, and figure out how to make it work with real estate? And man, it wasn't easy. Uh, I, I literally just burnt all my bridges and I said, fuck it. I'm going all in in real estate. And that's when we started flipping houses at a scale. Um, wholesaling came way after. Right. Wholesaling was for me a way to um, dig myself out of a hole pretty much. Yeah. And now I love it. Like, Absolutely. oh, no, no liability? Yeah, yeah, Shit, yeah. I'm in, I man. wish I was doing this before. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, absolutely. I, I actually used to be a wholesaler hater. Okay. Like, if you told me I'm a wholesaler, I'd be like, ooh. Man, I, I know those people. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> yeah. know, i say, ooh, no, no, no. You probably don't know your ARVs. Yeah, you don't you, know your numbers. Your numbers are wrong or your <laughs> your rehab estimates yep. are wrong, right? Yep. Um, so that's, that's how I was. And a lot of, a lot of that was limiting beliefs, not understanding the wholesaling business as a business. Right. A buddy of mine, I don't know if you know him, Alex de la Torre. Yeah. He's the one that explained it to me one day. So Ricardo, mm -hmm. you got to understand, man, the speed of money. Absolutely. You know? And he's not wholesaling anymore or not that I know of, but I think he was building or buying vacant land. I don't know. He changed his model a little bit, but, uh, it was until the one thing that I find is once you once you put yourself in a situation to where it's, it's either sink or swim, you're gonna fucking build a boat. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm not swimming. I'm building a boat exactly. to get on the boat. Absolutely. So I can take he can take me somewhere, right? Absolutely. Um, because for many years I tried the the side hustle thing and 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 I mean it worked. But you have options to get out. You know, if it doesn't work. I had created an option for me to get out. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. But it wasn't a solid option. Like, right. I didn't know how I was going to be able to replace my income. Right. 
You see, I, I made all that money, but I live like I made all that money. Exactly. Right? I had a big house, cars. Yeah. My daughter had a car. My mom right. had a car. My wife, mother. I, I was paying for everybody's cars. Yeah, and, yeah. Right? So, like the rappers. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like they, they take care of all their family yeah. and friends. Yeah. I was buy, that buy guy. Buy my house and all Well, thing. I didn't buy my mom yeah. a house. I yeah. should. But, uh, <laughs> but I was taking care of a lot of people Absolutely. around me. And once I lost that income, I was like, I did have a little bit of money saved. But, man... At the rate that I was spending it, it, it was just it wasn't it wasn't gonna it wasn't, wasn't going to last. Then, so anyhow, when did you find out about real estate, man? So, so you got in the car business, got in the car business, right? I sold cars and I was selling cars for seven or eight months, and I was doing pretty good. Like I, I, this was the first time in my life that I actually made quote unquote some money, some money, yeah. And and so for me, I, I never, I never, I didn't come for money. I never made a lot of money. So, yeah. um. My biggest month, I made twenty six grand. Wow! And dude, that's a that's sh- a lot of cars, sh- dude. Forty two units. Forty two units. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I and and I was very strategic, and I was a hustler. So like I I worked I, uh, they call them split deals. I worked deals with other people, other people. But I was strategic, and I'd work with like the closers. So we get big bigger grosses, more commission. So I was just loading up appointments and just fucking doing split deals, kind of like JV deals in yep. real estate, right? And uh, so I, I had some good months, and then um, one day I was sitting in the middle of the dealership, and this lady walks up to me and taps me on the shoulder. She's like, hey, can you help us? We're looking for a truck. I was like, yeah, absolutely, of course. They asked, like, fucking three other salespeople, and salespeople were just blew them off, okay? So thank God for me, right? Did they look like they didn't have any money? or Just regular people, man. Like, they didn't look like they had money or they didn't have money, but they were very unassuming. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you couldn't tell these people were probably solid. Exactly. By the way they looked. Yeah, just, just regular people. The average man. Joe. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, she she was there with her uh, her boyfriend or fiance or whatever, and it was his truck. And so I, I'm, I'm demoing trucks, showing trucks to him, and I sell him a, a, a Nissan Titan. And he had, like, he got shit done to it, like, fucking tent and all this stuff or whatever. So they had to keep the truck. And I had to deliver it to his house. But during the demo, I was asking him what he did. He's like, I'm in real estate. So, fuck, I was like, he's an agent. Real estate, because I didn't know shit about real estate, yeah. right? And uh, so I delivered the truck to his house two or three days later, and he lives, um, I don't want to tell where he lives, because I'm, I'm going to say his name to give him props, right. but he lives down on the water. Right. And uh, nice-ass house. And he's my age, so I'm like, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You're, like, you're, you're an agent? He's like, no, I, I flip and wholesale. I was like, I didn't know what the fuck that was. I mean, I knew what flipping was, but I didn't know what wholesaling yeah. was. I was like, okay, cool. And that was it, dude. That was the conversation, really. It was done more than that. But the seed was planted in my head, so. What kind of car does he drive today? That truck. He drives that truck. I'm going to shout him out. His name is Nathan Haley. Oh, yeah, I know Nathan. Yeah, you know Nathan? <laughs> I know yeah. who he is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Nathan, yeah. Nathan yeah. Haley, man, shout out to him. Yeah. He, he got me into real estate. Um, and so mad props to him because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be in this position. Yeah, and, that's uh, good. Shout yeah. out to Nathan. We yeah. got to bring Nathan to the Real Estate Absolutely. Entrepreneurs Podcast, Absolutely, man. man. He knows a shitload. And, uh, yeah. So that was in. I think uh, we sold him a few houses. I don't remember. He buys a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was in October. So, anyways, months go by. But I started YouTubing shit. And I came across Chris Rude. And he's wholesaling. And he was on oh. Grant Cardone's show yeah. and all this shit. So I was like, okay, cool. So this is like sometime in 2017. 17. 16, yeah. Yep. And so I remember the fucking day, dude. It was a, it was a Friday shift. At leaving the dealership it was fucking 9 30. And. The whole fucking day, I'm sitting in the dealership. I'm just looking at every. I'm not even. I wasn't even active. I didn't even do shit that day. I was guilt. Like I did. I was like everybody else, right? I didn't fucking yeah. work. I was just thinking. I was like, dude, like I don't. What do I do? What's my next move? Do I go in the finance department? Because they were they were offering me that opportunity to go in the box. And there's good money there. Do they make like two hundred grand? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like man, and, but they're the last guys out of the bro, dealership. You're there twelve hours yeah. a day, and you're you know yeah. And I'm not a suit guy. So see, you're worth. selling people yeah. fucking bro. Garbage <laughs> shit that doesn't make sense. Warranty, yeah, warranties on top of yeah. warranties. Yeah, and so it just wasn't my thing. So I left the fucking dealership that day, and I called Nathan at like nine thirty at night. He's, he doesn't really fucking know me. I'm like, hey Nathan, this is Blake. I sold you that truck. He's like, hey, what's going on? And I was like, man, I want to get into real estate. How do I get into real estate? And I don't think he took me serious. He was like, well, I mean, I come by my office or whatever if you want some time. So I was like, okay, cool. So my I had Thursdays off. So the next week, that Thursday, I went to his office. 
you know, and I think like everybody else, we get people that come to us, oh, I'm getting to real estate. And so he, I think he wanted to filter me. So he was like, all right, well, go find addresses. You know, go drive around and find vacant addresses and write them down. I was like, cool, I did it. So I went out and got like 200 of them. And I, I worked my first two or three deals with him. That's awesome. Yeah. I, you're not the first one that I know that worked with him. Um, I think uh, there's a couple of other guys that, I, that I've, of JV deals in the past with, and yeah. they, they at some point they were working with. Yeah, him. he's he's a very knowledgeable guy, man. So it just got my foot in the door. Yeah, and then I just went off, man, from there. And that first year, driving for dollars, that's how I got all my deals. Fucking pain in the ass, dude. Hard. Yeah, it's like, a lot of work. It's a lot of work. You're all man. day on your car. I, that's it, dude. But I, I skip tracing houses, skip tracing on fucking white pages. I had yeah. no, I didn't, I didn't have resources and systems. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, but I made it. I made it happen. I made enough to pay my bills and enough to to put you know gas in my car. Yeah, and you were investing in your education pretty much. Hundred percent, man. And then, you know, that next year, man, things started taking off. Started knocking down some deals, and um, you know, ever since, I mean, that's kind of where we're at. You know, so. that's good, man. So, um, so then, so you're 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 focusing right now on wholesaling. Wholesaling, a hundred percent. We we'll do. Uh, we're gonna do a hotel, so we'll do some hotels. Yeah. Uh, I got one right now in um, uh, North Houston that we're gonna close on next week, okay. but we're just gonna put it right back on the MLS. Yeah. Other than that, wholesaling. That's it, man. I, I don't want to. I'm not a flipper. I tried the flipping, and um, my last flip was in December of of this past year. Uh, horrendous experience. Made like four grand. And it's, at least you made money. At least we made money. I'm not complaining. We didn't lose money, but it felt like we did. I mean, because it was just, you know. Time, time opportunities. Contractor, headaches, headaches yeah. bullshit after bullshit. And yeah. so I made a decision. I was like, I'm going to do what I know. I'm good at wholesaling. I'm not a, I'm not a contractor. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a marketing and sales guy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue to just focus in on that. And so that's, that's what we're trying to build. That's good, man. So. Um, so how big is your team right now? So I have, I have two acquisition guys, one dispo person. Okay. And then I have, uh, an overseas call center. Okay. And that's uh, where you do your lead generation. That's where we do our lead generation. All cold calling? All cold calling. Okay. Yeah. But talking to you earlier, we, we might have to change that. Hey, you know, <laughs> it, I mean, but you're doing PPC as well. We are. We, we, we started PPC in March of this year. Right. So... I would just focus more on the PPC, to be honest would, with you. Because yeah. once you go that route, yeah, and like cold calling is so hard to scale. It's you know, very hard to scale. Um, you need different dialers yep. and different butts in the seats and new numbers and this and that. Yeah, I, I just rather do and 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 the and you're outbound, you know, so you have to create the opportunity for the prospect. Right. On PPC, they're looking for you. They're looking for you. So it's just a matter of what numbers. And uh, exactly, and so we're we're we just need to dial in on on the on the PPC man because it's we it's proof of concept for us. I mean, I know it works, but for us, it's been proven. Now it's just how do we how do we scale that? Because I'm chasing I'm chasing the Nick Perry's, the Corey Geary's, like these guys, man. Like uh, there's another guy, Josh Cohan. Uh, he's in the cartel, and you know uh, Robert Winsley kept talking about him because he has like these crazy conversion rates. So I right. I reached out to Josh on Facebook. And he doesn't know me from Adam, man. But I was like, Josh, this is what Robert told me. Is it true? And this dude's getting, out of nine leads, he's getting one contract. I'm like, holy shit. You know? And nine PPC leads. Yeah. It's fucking crazy, man. And, I mean, it's, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, <laughs> so um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember how many leads per contract we're getting through texting, but... I would say out of 10 leads, we get three or four. Damn. So That's good. Our cost per acquisition on texting is 500 bucks. That's fucking amazing. That's, That's why I can't let it go. I I'm, can't let I it go. I wouldn't let that go either. I can't let it go. I know It's changing. Yeah. Right? So, but man, I, when I look at it, I was like, I look at Nick or, 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 or Corey. I think Nick is at 2,500 and Corey is probably like 1,800, something yeah. like that. They're, they're lingering around. Yeah. Fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred is kind of like their cost per contract. Yeah, I was like, man, I'm, it cost me five hundred bucks to get That's the same freaking contract, and for me, it's like a hundred x because 
we so actually 10x so it cost me 500 but my average assignment is 15 to 20 um so how much now for the first time i feel like i'm really seeing the profits absolutely. on an assignment absolutely as opposed to when we were doing mailers yeah oh dude that was that was brutal that was four yeah. or five grand to get one contract it's fucking expensive man so we had to spend all kinds of stupid money to get any volume going yeah um but you know the other thing that's working out for good good for us is uh, social media i mean we I just put myself out there and I'm, I'm attracting J, uh, JV Absolutely. deals yeah, all day for long. Sure. For sure. Uh, and now with Investor Lift, we can push it out into because we can, <laughs> dude. That Investor Lift, this Robert and Dimitri it's fucking and Elise, Eliza, they 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 built a fucking Mad amazing scientist. plan. Yeah. yeah. So you know, you go like quick God mode, and then yeah. you can see all the buyers in the area. Yeah. It's like. These are all my buyers are, you know. What's cool is they integrated our, our PPC with Investor yeah. Lift. So when that lead comes in. It goes into your dude, Investor Lift. And, it, and it, it pulls up the buyers yep. in that area. Yeah. And so I'm just like, I mean, it's all the data is there, man. You know, it's so cool. It's such a cool system. Such That's pretty cool. System. How long have you been using it for now? Uh, this is June. Dude, three months now, 90 days. Yeah, we're probably a, a month behind you. Yeah. Uh, we... I actually turned it down the first time. It was crazy. I saw I saw your comment. So I it was someone mentioned you in a Facebook group, and because uh, I'm always like looking at you know shit, and and I, I saw one. Of your, you were like, no, nah, we're, we're, right now we're we're doing something else or something. So this is the thing, right? We had um, somebody asked about it, yeah, because they asked me if I was doing it, yeah, and I said no, even though I I like the platform because right. when I when I first when I first saw it. I think I saw Corey. Yeah. And Corey's my buddy. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, hey, man, what is that investor lift thing that you're talking about? He's like, oh, dude, it's a, it's a platform for buyers and this and that. And I was like, how much is it? And he's like, he told me. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. I was like, what? How much? How much? And he's like, yeah, but, dude, it's so easy to use. And I was like, man, I don't see how I can fit that in right now. So. I had two Dispo guys that were very talented. Um, and and then I had uh, some uh, VAs that will skip trade. So this our process was we went on PropStream. Let's say we got a house in, um, on a, I don't know, Oklahoma. Right. Oklahoma City, right? So we go in Oklahoma City and we'll skip trace all the buyers in the area from PropStream. Okay. Right, and I have my own skip tracing service, so we, yeah. we'll use my service, we'll get the list, and then we'll text them. Okay. And we qualified all the buyers. Hey, are you a buyer? Yes. Okay, what are you buying? Boom, boom, boom. Hey, we got a property in your area. So we we text for buyers like we do for sellers. Same process. And these are your overseas people doing These this? are my overseas nice. people, right? Okay. So when I was doing that, I even show uh, I had a lot of properties in the middle of nowhere. And... Nick, uh, Corey was like, hey, man, but let's do a demo. That way you can look at it. I was like, all right. So I got Robert in there, and he's doing this demo, and I'm looking at everything that, that's on the system. But I also have my whole team watching the demo. And I wasn't going to commit right away. Yeah. I, I was literally going to watch the demo and said, okay, yeah, let just, me get back to you. Let yeah. me process this information. Yeah. And as soon as we were done, I mean, uh, when he's like, hey, Ricardo, are uh, you doing PPC right now? I was like, no texting what's your cost per contract 500 he's like oh shit like you're doing real good with your numbers is what robert is saying but like he tried to sell me from things that i wasn't using right and and then but he was a damn good salesman and when i saw that god yeah, most stuff yeah. and the cartel yeah i was like okay yeah, that's interesting i just don't know how i can fit it in so i said man I'm going to think about it, but I don't think it's for me right now. Right. Uh, I gave him a list of properties. He's like, look, find me buyers for these properties. If you find me buyers for these properties, I'll buy that thing. No problems. So we sent him a list. We never heard back from the guy, right? He probably got the email, never looked at it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and long story short, we continue operating the way we were. Yep. And this is uh, where we are. We are in June. This is probably sometime in March or February. Okay. We were in the old office. So it was January or February. Yeah. And um, one of my guys starts kind of like flaking, the Dispo guys. 
And then the other guy came in and was like, man, um, I think I'm going to quit. I'm gonna, this is not working for me. I'm going to do this other thing. And that's when I said, okay, I guess this is the time where I can introduce something different. Right. That, that way it doesn't disrupt my flow. Absolutely. And I call Corey right away. Hey, Corey, can you get me the little cheap, the cheap platform? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, which, what cheap the platform? The Pro or the something? The Pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, can you get me? I just need the Pro, bro. I yeah. just need to get the buyers from the Pro, and, yeah. and I'm good. I, I can care less for the cartel mode. Yeah. And he's like, come on, Ricardo, you're a cartel guy, man. You got, yeah. we had like $300,000 on assignments at yeah. the time. Um, and I was like, I know, man, but it's 36 Gs, man. Yeah. Like, that. that's not easy to, I feel, that's no, easy that's to. that's a tough, I don't care who you a, are. It's a tough pill to swallow, you <laughs> yeah. know. And so he got me in there, and then, uh. And Robert is like, all right, man, so you're going to get it? I was like, yeah, I just, wanna, I just want the pro. And he goes, <laughs> okay, Ricardo, why the hell are you going to shortchange yourself for a pro account? Uh, and, and I was like, well, Robert, you know, it's 36 grand. You know, we got to put all this money up front right now. And, and I got people that are literally doing all the dispos for me. I just need something that right. is going to help me, you know, um, send these things easier. And he's like, do you know we have a mastermind in Tulum coming up and all the cartel members are going to be there and you're not going to be there? And I was like, what? A mastermind? I Now I saw a different value. Absolutely. And I was like, um, when is that? And he's like, dude, that's in like a month. And by the way, you can come in and, and be there the whole week and get to know uh, the whole team, like his team, Dimitri yeah. and everybody else is behind it. And all these guys are gonna come, or most of them, because we we missed a lot of you. You weren't yeah. you weren't there, yeah. but we missed a few people that didn't yeah. show up. And I said, "All right, dude, I'm in." So he got me in there, and once I started using the platform, then I was like, "I should have done this shit quicker." Yeah, sooner. it's amazing, man. It's amazing. Our my, our first PPC lead, I'm sorry, not lead, but deal that we did in Pennsylvania, the buyer fucking came from from. Uh, yeah, investor, investor lift. lift. It was amazing. It, I was like, because like I'm, I'm, I like to, I like to see proof, man. It's just how I am. Even though I know I'm optimistic, I, I it's there's always that part of me is like, fuck, is this gonna work? And it was just perfect, man. We locked up the deal, sold the deal the next day using investor lift. And I was like, shit, this is this is badass, man. Yeah, we we saw one in Louisiana too, like that. Yeah, a triplex. Yeah, and and the guy, the buyer came in, so we were asking 105 for it. The buyer came in at 70. Yeah. And then we didn't even reply. We're like, fuck this guy. Yeah. Like, he's, asking, <laughs> like, he's asking way, yeah, he's yeah. way too far from our, yeah. then he came in at 85. Yeah. And then he up to <laughs> 105. I was like, the hell, yeah. we didn't even hustle with the guy. He just put three offers. Yeah. But we didn't respond to him. Right. So he's like, these guys are not taking me serious. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he went through our page. And so we had a lot of houses there. Absolutely. Like, you know what? These guys are not going to give me this house or this property exactly. away. Right. That's what's cool about is from the, from the wholesaling side, it, Having all your properties listed, it, it it raises your value to to the buyers. Yeah. Because they, they see, wow, like these guys actually do deals. Like I want to make sure I have a good connection with them, good rapport, so that we can do deals future. In the future, right? That's right. Versus and, beat them up over the head. You know? Dude, and I get a good buyer, so and I've I've had a couple of guys from that part of town where you are yeah. that they try to beat me up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had I had I'm not gonna mention any names. Uh, but James Toller. James Toller. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, he's my buddy, by the I way. I sold some deals to James. But yeah. James was working with, or um, he's probably still working with another, I can't for, uh, forget her name. Um, she's an agent. And I had this property in Baytown. Uh, now, I don't sell personally the properties anymore. I just get right. my guys come to me and say, hey, man, Blake is offering X yeah, yeah. for this. And I was like, no. Yeah. You know, so Alex at the time will come to me and said, hey, man. Uh, James sent his acquisitions person to this Baytown property. And I know he buys over there. He, lo yeah, that's his he loves the area. Yeah. He grew up in Baytown. Yep. So he was on this podcast actually yeah. before. So yeah. he was looking. Um, I, I'm like, all right, what, where, where's he at? And they're like, way, like, they're not <laughs> even close, right? And I was like, oh, okay, don't even reply. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, that, those offers, they're like, they're like offensive to me. They're trying to sell you. That's what these some of these guys are trying to like, you know. I was like, you know what, man? I'm not doing that. So long story short, um, I assigned it to somebody else yeah. for what we wanted. Absolutely. Right? And then I went to his event. He invited me to speak at his event and in uh like his meetup that yeah, he does yeah. in Clear Lake, right? Yeah. 
And the girl comes to me. He's like, hey, Ricardo. I said, what's going on? What happened to the house you all had in Baytown? I said, which one? I mean, we, yeah. we had multiple deals over there. It was like a little house. It was a two one, bam, bam, bam. And I, right off the back, I remember the property. And I was like, yeah, we saw that. Why? Man, I really wanted that property. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. The, were you the person James sent? And I'm thinking she's independent. Yeah. I didn't know she was working with James at the time. I, I know. I, I, man, what's I her forget name? her name. But Last name is Heffin, I think. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, her. Yeah. Yep, yep. And I said, look, were you the, the person that was working like acquisitions with James on that deal? And she's like, yeah, I was negotiating the deal for, for, for you know, for us, you right. know. And I was like, so why in the hell you didn't pay the, re the what we were asking for? And she gave me like, no, you weren't asking that. You were asking something else. Like, no way. I, we always price our properties to where it's a take it or leave it. Absolutely. You know, and at the time, your offer was like way far from where we were. And I wasn't just even going to spend time on yeah. that. I was actually putting James on a blacklist. Yeah. <laughs> because now I really don't want to deal with him if yeah. he's going to be making this offer. And right. don't get me wrong. That yeah. doesn't mean I don't love the guy. Yeah. No, I get it. I'm just not going to transact. I have buyers like that. Yeah. I'm not going to transact with somebody that's, that's, that's lowballing every single time. Yep. Because it's, it's like energy, right? It is. It's a waste of time, man. I mean, I've had – what's cr I mean, it's like some of the offers I get. I had a property in East End, and, you know, I, I had – I did a showing, and, and uh, I had this one guy. I sold it for ninety two, and he comes back at 58000 And I'm just like, where, where are you at, dude? Yeah. Like, where, like – you're. I, so check this out. We have <laughs> this guy. We have a property in uh, Port Arthur. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're asking, I would think it's 95 grand. Our property's in good shape. Yeah. ARV is probably 150, 160, something yeah. like that. He's, he submits a lowball offer for 35K. Oh, my God. With a proof of funds that's like three years old. Yeah. <laughs> that shows he's got $2 million in his checking account or money market account. Yeah. And I'm like, what is this guy doing? Yeah. Number one, he's 35K. Come on, dude. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, really, you're 60,000 below. Yeah. Uh, number two, your proof of phone is not even up to date anymore. Yeah. And then he's stalking some kind of a game on the phone. Like, he's yeah. trying to sell me a why I need to sell right. it to him. Hey, man, is it yes or no? That's it. And, and is it 95K or? And now, if I get a property and everybody's coming, you know, 10K below, 10K below, 10K below. Maybe a guy is 5K below. I'm going to reconsider. Be, be, yeah, because then the marketplace is talking to me. Right. You know, and that's that's where I know we got it for too high. Yeah. Whenever we dispo it out and all my buyers that don't know each other are hovering around that same price, I'm like, I, I talked to I talk to Kyle, who's my dispo. I'm like, dude, we got it fucking too high. Yeah. You know, we need to renegotiate. Or, or if, you know, if we didn't get too high, we're trying to make too much or something. Right. You know, and so we had to just... Kind of go from yeah, there. we we we're good at um like locking them up right. I, I don't like to lock them up high. I hate it. So it was a pain. Well, it's more work in the end. It's it more work in the end. Yeah, uh, you know. And then I actually don't even like locking them up at all, man. If yeah. I'm only making like three grand or five grand, I say, man, that's that's just too much energy for that mo right. for that amount of money, right? right? But number one, number two, um, I want to be able to, you know, make it a, a a, a good enough spread to where I don't have to go renegotiate with the seller. Right. Every time we lock it up high, what do we end up doing? Renegotiating <laughs> with the seller. And it's usually before closing. Like always. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. a day before closing. Hey, I got good news and bad news. Good news is tomorrow we're closing. Close. Bad news bad is you got to come down 5K yeah. <laughs> or 10K. <laughs> and, you know, and they're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, you yeah. know, blah. But I'm like, look, I pay you way too much. I can't yeah, do this deal, right? It is, yeah. So, and we're actually doing that on two properties yeah. right now that we assigned already. They have yeah. a buyer. Yep. But we're in increasing our spread because yeah. we're like, we had to sell them cheaper than Absolutely. what we thought. Yeah. You know, nobody was buying in the area and we're like, you know what? Let's just give up this thing. So, um, so right now you're 100% wholesaling. Yes, sir. And... What uh, you said in the future, you may end up doing rentals and things of that nature, well, right? I, that's, I want, that's, um, I have to, right? I mean, I have to have passive income. So for me, my vision, like even for our team, is financial freedom for all of us, right? For all the team members. I mean, that that's the fucking goal, man. That's why yeah. I do what we do. Um, I I have to have that vision because I I get so caught up in the in the deals. I'm a deal junkie. Yeah, you know that shit. I might just do this shit forever and not build anything passive, you know. And so, 
now that I have a significant other and we're thinking about like families and long term, I'm thinking different. So I'm like, okay, let's, we have to have some passive income. So for me, the wholesaling is something I want to build out, you know, and I want this thing to run for, I mean, as long as we can it's run a, this. It's a bicycle, man. You know what I mean? It will run as long as you keep it, it, pushing the pedals. Exactly. Um, but for me, my, uh, my goal is to have eight to 10,000 passive income in you know, the next two years, you know, that's pretty doable. Yeah. Especially since we, we, we source the deals. You source the deal. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, I don't care how it happens. I, from what my research, I'm not an expert in that part of the real estate. And I got a friend um, that his name is uh, Scott Jelinek, and okay. he's out of Virginia Beach. And Scott um, built a a business in the past that was highly leveraged. So in 2008, came in, he got wiped out, yeah. pretty much, right? And it took him a little while to get to reengage and and get back on track. But next time around, he came back on track. He bases business on free and clear properties. So he said, I'm going to wholesale, but all the money I make in wholesaling, I'm going to pump it back into free and clear properties, like little bitty houses and shit. Like, they don't have to be like mansions or anything like that. And he built a such a rock solid business today that he gets up in the morning, he eats breakfast, and he's done. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and now he lives in the water. Like, like I, I follow him on Facebook yeah. all the time, and I, I actually need to bring him here, but he doesn't travel, so most yeah. likely I'm going to have to go there and interview yeah. him there. Uh, but uh, I see his pictures all the time. I was like, man, he's already done for the day. Like, ni- awesome. 9 a.m., and he's done. Like, That's literally, because awesome. he lives off his passive income. Absolutely. Um, and he's all free and clear houses. He doesn't fix them nothing. Like, he finds a way to either owner finance them out, uh, and I haven't gotten into too much details on how he does yeah. it, but it's totally doable, man. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah. If you if you're if you're making the cash and you can go buy a forty thousand dollar property, fifty thousand. I mean, that and you ain't got no fucking loan on it. I mean, we got a couple right now on their contract. Like yeah. one of there's one in uh, in Toledo, Ohio. We got for like, I think it's twenty one thousand, and that thing brings four hundred bucks a month. Damn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we have another one in. Um, uh, we just got it today, um, somewhere in Missouri, and it's like twenty two thousand. But the house is in good shape. Yeah. Like you don't even have to flip them. Right. All you gotta do is get four or five hundred bucks, and next thing you know, there's that money starts piling up. Hundred percent. And you can you can buy all of those owner finance. Yeah, yeah. Just buy them on terms. Buy them on terms. Yeah. And I'll pay you off in five years. If I, I got one in Lake Jackson. Uh, we uh, we picked it up for. I'll say it was 65. I gave the guy 5K down, and then I went and rehabbed it. So I put 20 at least out of my pockets okay. on the rehab. Uh, but it's worth 150. Damn. Uh, so you're 25,000 out of your pocket for a house that's worth 150. Yeah, that's and I, I owe 60. That's amazing. May, maybe less now. Yeah, yeah. It's been a year since. He, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm going to Airbnb that one. Nice. But my job is to pay him off as soon as I can. Yeah. And and um, you can do that all over the country, man. As long as you know the lingo, you know what to say, what to yeah. offer, how to structure the deal. It's got to be a win-win. Yeah, for sure. So for that guy, he wanted some passive income. That was you. That used to be one of his rentals. Okay. And he said, Ricardo, I don't want to lose my passive income. I said, well, how about you owner finance it right. to me? And he doesn't have to be a fucking landlord. He doesn't have to be a landlord. He yeah. doesn't have to be yeah. deal with evictions. He actually had it rented for way on the market value. Most most of those most of those guys do man. way yeah. under market value. Yeah, and I was like, dude, you're too nice to that lady, man. Yeah, she's paying you six hundred bucks when she should be paying fifteen hundred. Exactly. You know, yeah. um, of course, the conditions of the property and all that, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, it's totally doable. You just gotta go and put those owner finance offers in, and sometimes you can do it without any money down. Right. It's like, hey, I'll take it over from you, but there's no money down. I'll just start making the next payment next month. Yeah. And boom, then you do it. We've we've done quite a few of those. Nice. I just find I just find myself wholesaling those notes. Yeah. Because I needed so much so much cash from the last yeah. three or four years that right. I was hemorrhaging freaking money. Right. That I was just creating structuring deals just to right. bring money in. Well, it's know? crazy how your situation it it was a catalyst to put you where you are now. You know, like that, that shit never happened. Oh, I would be doing the same thing. Yeah. I would be with Dennis out there banging houses. That's yeah. it, flipping them, flipping them. We had a flipping machine. Yeah. 
We bought, rehab, sold, or rented. I mean, it was just a, a, a flipping machine. Unfortunately for me and him, it didn't run long enough. Yeah. Uh, to where we, we were more solid, you know, financially. Right. And even though we had a little bit of money, I mean, that money went out fast. Yeah. Like, and, and so we had to become wholesalers by necessity. Right. It was like, what can we do to bring a lot of money in to get us out of a bind? And we had to tr- we had to transact with a lot of lenders. Like, hey man, yeah, house I, is ready. I can't do anything. Here's the house. Take it back, bro. Right. It's worth more, but right. you know, I can't yeah. pay that note anymore. Right. I, we didn't we didn't have any money. Yeah, some of the guys they decided to foreclose. I was like, hey, that's what it is. You want to f- go that route? That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that you know, everybody takes the risk. Um, but um, we still got like two or three of those properties. Really? Yeah. Those yeah. lenders are working with us. That's cool, though. Yeah. They're That's waiting. Cool. And I say, look, guys, I'm doing one at a time. Yeah. One at a time. I yeah. can't be flipping 10. No. Because I can, can't. I'm counting on the wholesaling money right. to fix those properties. Absolutely. Put them on the market, get rid of them. And that's part of the that's part of the game, man. Yeah. I mean, they it, there's risk on all sides. Yeah. You know, and, and fucking Harvey... It's a hundred year storm. No, it is. I mean, like, it's fucking crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the last thing I was waiting on it for something like that to show up in right. Houston while I had. Let, so check this out. You mentioned something about wholesaling, right? Yeah. So, and this is one of the biggest lessons I learned and that I try to share with as many people as I can. Um, you know, I think I told James because I saw James buying a lot of properties and rehab. He had like a lot of projects. Yep. And when he did the podcast with me, I said, look, man. Be careful, because that's how I got in troubles. When Harvey hit, I had 27 rehabs going, mm. but I had another 20 properties that was I was getting ready to wholesale. Oh, shit. Right? All private money. 40-some, 47. 47. Yeah. And sure enough, when Harvey hits, um, I had the 27 rehabs that were at different stages, okay? But I just... I was getting ready to close on the other 20. Now, I did not not pull the trigger because I had them all under contract. Right. I had all the private money available. And my crew was still with me. So I counted on my crew to, you know what? I got all these guys. I have 50 guys working for us. It was like 40-something people. And, you know, they even after Harvey, two or three weeks later, they were still there. Right. They were actually helping me fix all the rentals we had at the time. Get them ready, cleaned out, and, and and good to go. But after three weeks, man, now you got three hundred thousand houses that are right. flooded, yep. and the prices are tanking now yep. because there's low ball offers everywhere. Mm-hmm. Did it flood once, tw- tw- twice, or right. three times? You know, yeah. um, that anything that we bought to hotel wasn't worth that much anymore. Right. So so your your values dropped. Our values yeah. dropped, and uh, and then. We were competing with cheaper houses, right? On, on the rehab side, and on the wholesaling side, this is like a perfect storm. And so, if we finish the house, we put it on the market, and dude, it would take months. Yeah, two, nine months, ten months, um, and that's interest money going out, right. right? Eventually, it just becomes chaos. Like eventually, it's like we don't have more money and. Having a lot of money into having no money at all, right? And shit, both Dennis and I started falling behind on our own mortgages. Yeah, and, and like as soon as our lease was over in our office, we're like, get it, get I'm rid out. of it. I'm, I'm out. out of here. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I'm cutting overhead everywhere I can. Yeah. Right. Um, but that's how we became wholesalers. So we started doing meetups. We had a meetup in Katy. We had another one in Spring, just to build buyers list because we were. Wholesaling locally. Right. And what we started finding out is, and, and it was working perfect. Like, we were building all these buyers and all that. But what we started finding out was that um, there was an influx of investors from all over the country. Come in. Coming yep. in. Wholesalers, buyers. Yep. And they were inflating the market on offers. So yep. if you are somebody that's got a flooded house and now you got 10 offers... Now you can bargain your price. Yep. And it becomes a bidding war. And I told Dennis, like, man, we need to go somewhere else. Like, we can't just stay here. Yeah. And so we started doing mailers to Tampa. And we started getting deals on ta- in Tampa. And then we started doing things in other cities. And that's how we transitioned into this whole 
nationwide. Virtual. But it was virtual. it was virtual. Like literally, I would take an airplane and go to Tampa and go to all the appointments because I was. I was like, I couldn't understand how you can do this over course, the phone. Of course, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to go create a report, yeah. you know. Because that's what we're taught. We're taught that. We were, yeah. I was taught that. Yeah. Well, I learned that I, way. I, that's how I learned, too. I learned that way. I belly wasn't, to belly. Yeah, belly yeah. to belly. Go yeah. get in front of the seller. You, yeah. It's yours, right? Yeah. So I will time all these appointments, go to Tampa, and lock them up, come back, try to sell the contracts. We hire somebody local there to to help us move the deals. But at the end of the day, that person didn't work out. A lot of lessons learned, you know. And now it's like, send me a picture. Okay, that's the rehab. Boom, done. Offer contract. Let's yep. go, right? But that's how we that's how we we put ourselves in that position. Now you're right. I'll probably be still flipping houses if I never got into that. Right. In, 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 in if I never went through a Harvey. Yeah. Um. And I, what I'm building now is a lot more solid. You know. Hundred percent. Well, and, it, it, and it's I'm sure just. You know, on your life path, it might even be more fulfilling. I don't know. I mean, because you're all these connections and it's and, more fulfilling. Yes. You know? uh, one thing I didn't do that I failed to do at the time was networking. Yeah, I didn't network a lot. Uh, and one of the reasons is because we were visiting houses every. Yeah, you're in the trenches, day, man. Yeah. And we were pounding on contractors, going from house to house to house to house to house, raising private money, right? Going back to houses, showing them the projects, the the, the process, the whole nine yards. So I didn't invest a lot of time in networking. Uh, I knew some people in Houston, but I didn't really know a lot yeah. of people. And I started networking when we started building a buyer's list. That's it. That's when my right. networking started. And now lately, I haven't even been networking in town. I'm networking nationwide. Absolutely. So yeah. we pick up a deal in El Paso. We know who to quarterback it to. We pick right. up something, you know. We start aligning ourselves with players in other markets. That way, we can move deals faster. Right? Absolutely, that's that's big thinking, though, man. Yeah. That's it's it's exciting. Hey, I love it. I, yeah. I, I love this business. I do um, too. Um, you know, it's got its setbacks, and you know, <laughs> you deal with people that yeah. don't fulfill. Yeah. And yep. They don't make the calls, right. or they don't show up on time. Yeah. But to me, that's that's an easy fix. Just get rid of them and bring somebody else. And in. that's that's with any business. Yeah, you know, any, any business, any business going to be like that. Ice cream shop. If yeah. the guy doesn't show up on time, yep. you can't open the store on time. Absolutely. Right? So, man, thank you so much for coming in, Blake. Absolutely I appreciate you, bro. Absolutely, it's a pleasure, um, man. Guys, yeah. don't forget about the real estate event, uh, entrepreneurs event and mastermind, Miami, Florida, October twenty first through the twenty fourth. Okay, it's it's four days. Uh, the event itself is two days. We have a mastermind for the VIPs on the twenty first, actually. Get your tickets at re3mastermind.com. Uh, you have to sign up for uh, in order to see the tickets. So make sure you get yourself um, your information in it. Miami, Florida, October 21st through the 24th. This was a wholesaling cartel edition today. Because we have our friend um, Blake from Freedom Hawk giving us uh, his, uh, his journey on his life and what he's up to now and um, I'm looking forward to see you on the next one. Don't forget to hit share, like, and subscribe. You'll have a great day. Bye.